In 2009, the death of a Reddit user kicked off a series of events that would lead to hidden message boards, odd job postings, and perhaps even murder. Uh, today, we explore the strangeness known as Lake City Quiet Pills. Welcome to the first official episode of Down With The Strangeness. I am your host, Ben. I am excited to uh, introduce you to this new podcast uh, for you guys to join this. Um, This essentially, Down With The Strangeness, is my podcast where each and every single week we're going to cover a different piece of strangeness from this crazy world. We will talk about Everything from true crime classics, internet conspiracies, and real-world mysteries to things like Bigfoot, aliens, and the paranormal. Uh, Anything that might be considered strange is something that we uh, will likely talk about on this podcast. Uh, And I am excited for, well, I guess before I get into everything, uh, I guess housekeeping, things that you should do when you have a podcast, right? Follow, subscribe. Um, rate and review after you listen to the episode. Let me know what you think. You can email me, all of that stuff. But we'll talk more about that later. I'm really excited um, to get to what is going to be the first piece of strangeness we're ever going to cover. It is one of my personal favorite pieces of strangeness, and I'm just really excited um, to talk with you guys about it today. So something that I'm sure that I'll say again many times in the future of this show, uh, or at least a handful more times is our story begins on Reddit. Um, I can't imagine that you don't know what Reddit is if you're listening to this podcast, but just in case, uh, Reddit is essentially a forum. Uh, It's also a news aggregator, content aggregator, where users can share and interact with various pieces of content from images and videos um, to links that take them away from Reddit to other sites. Um, It's a very user-driven platform. Um, based on what gets attention what and what doesn't, kind of like a lot of social media that you would be familiar with. Um, it even it has like an upvote and downvote system and allows users to give value uh, and say whether they essentially liked or didn't like um, a post or a piece of content. And, and I could go on, but this is not an episode about Reddit. Uh, I had just had to talk about Reddit just because uh, our story kind of begins with one specific Reddit user. Um, Reddit user Religion of Peace. Uh, he was a frequently, regularly active user uh, on the site uh, on Reddit from 2007 to 2009. Um, and his post history was certainly interesting. Um, and there's a lot that you can get into there. He has an extensive post history. Most of it really isn't worth your time. Um, it's kind of noise. Uh, like I said, he was a regular user. He posted and commented a lot. So there's a lot of stuff to went through to go through there. But uh, I want to pull some things that are noteworthy, um, both to kind of give us an idea of who Religion of Peace was um, and to help things that we talk about further in the episode make more sense. Um, so, yeah, so we could call back to any of these things, and, and I just want to paint a picture of who we're dealing with. So from Religion of Peace's post history, we know a handful of things about the user. Um, he was not the most pleasant person. Uh, there was a lot of angry, hateful comments, which is not uncommon if you're someone who's on Reddit. You you know that. Um, he had a lot of, you know, just mean comments. Uh, he was active in some questionable subreddits, uh, such as... He was a moderator, uh, meaning that he was one of the users in charge of the now uh, extinct or shut down subreddit called Jailbait. Um, So beyond his pornographic and angry post history, there were some other things that we learned about Religion of Peace um, that are a little more interesting and unique from your stereotypical angry porn Reddit user. Um, It's hard to tell exactly what his age was, but there are... Uh, there's a few conflicting pieces of information, but everything kind of points to him being in his 70s and in his late 70s, although, like I said, a little bit of contradictory stuff there. Um, he was oddly comfortable discussing violence and death and killing, um, and he appeared to have some sort of military background. Um, and it's not just because he said so, right? There's some of the uh, some of the way... The way that he talks about certain topics and some of the lingo that he uses, if he's not in the military, he is tremendously connected or familiar with that 
um, world, right? Or with that community. He knows the things to say. He knows how to say them. So it seems like he may have had military background. He does claim to have military background. He actually claims that he was present at D-Day, um, essentially the end of World War II in Europe. Uh, he claims to have been there in a support role um, on a ship, not a direct combat role. And this is one thing that one of many things that kind of adds more questions around his exact age. Um, but it's an interesting piece nonetheless. Uh, uh, another thing is if a 70 something year old man navigating Reddit and the internet, um, especially in 2009, as if that wasn't impressive enough, his post history shows us that religion of peace has at least a halfway decent, um, or passable understanding of computers and coding. Uh, so not to harp on too much of his negative uh, background, it's just crucial to talk about some of those things. But we mentioned that he had a somewhat pornographic history, right? The jailbait and some other subreddits similar to that. Um, and he would regularly link, because especially back in the day, like now if you want to share an image on Reddit, you can post the image directly to Reddit in most cases and Reddit will host that image there, right? It'll have a home on Reddit where people can then look and interact and things like that. But that isn't always the case. Something that people still do and something that in 2009 was a necessity um, when wanting to share images on Reddit is people would use an image hosting website, something like Imgur or Photobucket, something that you, listeners might be more familiar with. Um, but essentially an image hosting site just allows users to upload their images to that domain and it kind of gives it a home on the internet, a place for people to visit it and view it. Uh, and Religion of Peace would regularly link to an image hosting website that he referred to as that old guy's image host. Um, and that link or and that what he's talking about there leads to a URL uh, of lakecityquietpills.com. Uh now, this image hosting site is obviously the namesake for this mystery or, or this piece of strangeness, right? And the reasons why will become clear as we go further. Um, so Lake City Quiet Pills, the website, had more users than you'd probably imagine, or at least than you would like to think. Um, and that's largely in part to the fact that Religion of Peace would regularly recommend um, his image hosting site to those uh, people on Reddit, those users looking to um, host, let's call them questionable images. Uh, so we've got religion of peace, an angry old man with possible military experience, and an unsettling comfort with death and violence who apparently likes young women and knows more about computers than any 70-year-old you've probably ever met. Um, and religion of peace made his final post on Reddit, his final comment on July 17th, 2009. Um, that comment was nothing special, just more angry, uh, ranting about spam, pretty standard stuff for him. But where Religion of Peace's Reddit activity ends is kind of where our story really begins. Um, on that very same day that Religion of Peace made his final post on Reddit, July 17th, 2009, a new account was created. Um, and that account was just, and it's, it's incredibly short. It, I, it still blows my mind how short this username is. Um, but again, back in 2009, all the good ones hadn't been taken yet. Not that this is a good one. Um, but uh, an account was created on July 17th, 2009, account uh, 2-6, the number 2 hyphen 6. Um, and 2-6, so this is another person, right? We've talked about religion of peace. Now we're talking about 2-6. And 2-6 posted... For the first and only time on that day, July 17th, 2009, um, and his post was titled, The End of Religion of Peace. He died today. Uh, and his post read the as, uh, as the following. I'm the person who provided Religion of Peace the space for that old guy's image host. Milo died today. He was 79 years old. He died at his desk looking at your site. Milo was a mean old fucker, mean and ornery. He hooked me up with my first gig when I got out of the army. I didn't like finding him like that. Milo don't have any living relatives and no real friends. And other than his landlady and a few people where he worked, he didn't talk to anyone about much of anything. Me, he just tolerated. As I said, he was mean. I think he used that as a shield to keep people away from him. 
Milo thought God was some kind of con game thought up by some lazy sons of bitches who didn't want to work every day, so he's going into the fire on Monday without a service, just like he wanted. I'm planning to dump his ashes in the woods in PA near where he was born. Can't put them right there because there's a mall there now. I gave the girl next door his raggedy old cat and most of his books, his computers and tronic shit he tagged for the disabled vets and the VA. All the rest of the stuff is for the Salvation Army. All those years and everything he owned fits in the trunk of my car. I don't know what else to say. I'll miss him, miserable bastard. So that gives us a little more information about religion of peace, right? Including an age and a name. He's Milo, 79 years old. Um, now we also have our new person involved, our new Reddit user, 26, who is a, well, I guess that we'll get into that later, but we have 26, and, and he made this post announcing the death of religion of peace. And this post did not explode or go viral um, by the standards of today's internet um, or even the standards of today's Reddit, really. But again, this was 2009. So the 600 and something upvotes and 129 comments were enough to land this post on the front page of Reddit, um, which the front page of Reddit is where they put, of all the content on their site, that's where they put the things that are most popular that they think that most people may be into um, based, again, on the interaction from users ahead of time. And that's kind of shared with all users of the site. So that typically gets you more eyeballs than posting in something more specific and niche. Um, and kind of like still happens today, some Reddit users decided that they wanted to dig deeper into this after they saw this post. Who was Religion of Peace? Who is 2-6? And why should anybody even care? Um, so... This is where one of the first big pieces of connectivity that we get in all of this, um, and this is going to link Religion of Peace in 2.6. Um, it came from outside of Reddit. It was on another forum news type website called FARC. Um, and they found a user on FARC whose account dated back to 2001 with the username of Angel2-6. Um, so that's Angel, and here... Unlike on Reddit, here 2 and 6 are spelt out. So it's angel, T-W-O hyphen S-I-X. Um, and while the number sequence occurring together alone is not enough to say that it's a solid connection, um, there is more that makes this an odd and important discovery. Angel26 had a short bio on their FARC page uh, that read, Dispensing Lake City Quiet Pills to Lousy Bastards in Need of Permanent Rest Since 1968. Uh, so right there we have a reference to Lake City Quiet Pills. And we have this Angel 2-6 who makes very similar uh, grammar and spelling errors that we saw in the posts of 2-6 on Reddit. Um, it, it, it might, you might have noticed as I was reading the post uh, that two six left on Reddit. Uh, there was a there were a few times where I stumbled or kind of hesitated, and that's because I was reading it as it was written with all the fucked up spelling and punctuation. Uh, so, but we see those same mistakes, the exact same mistakes, including how he's misusing these the punctuation, uh, and they match right the Reddit post and this Fark user. Um, and I forgot to mention that Angel two six had an email address listed on their Fark account as well um there that email address was angel26 at lakecityquietpills.com uh, now that seems like a little too much to be a coincidence but we'll see the further we kind of get into everything uh the discovery of this fark profile left people with more questions than they had answers the investigation continues uh kind of led or spearheaded or really conducted entirely by the collective hive mind of reddit until one day they discover the next piece of strangeness within this story. Users, they were trying to find more connections, right? They were trying to go deeper and deeper. And at some point, users began looking at the HTML source code of the Lake City Quiet Pills website. And it's there they discovered uh, what appeared to be a hidden message board, kind of buried um, and tucked away within the coding of the site itself. Um, I'm not exactly positive what the keyboard shortcut is, but you can go to any web page on your computer right now and hit one of the F keys, maybe F12 or F9, 
Um, I should have prepared better for that. But regardless, you can access this on any web page that you're on. You can just hit a keyboard shortcut one button and boom, you can see the source code for the entire website that you're on. There's actually a handful of websites, including Amazon, that build little like almost Easter eggs, right? Or just things in their code for people to find that are um, humorous or at least kind of reward you from digging a little deeper. Um, But a lot of the ones you're going to find today are uh, intentional and meant to be funny and meant to be seen. And it was obvious based on the nature, I think, of of what's on the Lake City Quiet Pills website that it was not meant to be seen because the majority of these messages appeared to be job postings for some type of military contractor or security mercenary type work. Um, Now, I realize that this is a big jump. Right. It's this is the biggest jump we've made so far in terms of connecting all the pieces of Lake City Quiet Pills. So before we keep going with this, why don't we pause and kind of take a step back and summarize, kind of catch us catch us up to everything that got us to this point. So there's an angry old Reddit user, Religion of Peace. He, uh, he has military experience and computer skills uh, as Religion of Peace's Reddit activity ends. A new account is created claiming to be his friend. He posts on Reddit sharing about the passing. Uh, the hive mind of Reddit connects the men to one another uh, and connects them to the Lake City Quiet Pills image hosting website. Uh, Internet sleuths discover hidden messages on the image hosting site, and the messages appear to be soldier for hire type job postings. Uh, that's the simplified version of how we got where we are. Uh, so now I think the next thing we should do is probably get into these job postings a little bit, and that'll lead us to some of the strangeness that comes next, right? And And actually, before we get into the specific postings, there was a familiar message uh, hidden within the code of the site as well, Um, something that you may find as, like, say, a banner, something at the bottom of a web page nowadays. But um, this is going to sound familiar because built within that code and hidden there, it says, Dispensing Lake City Quiet Pills to Lousy Bastards in Need of Permanent Rest Since 1968. Um, and if that sounds familiar, it's because you're remembering it from the FARC bio of user Angel26. That's just, like I said, just another interesting piece of connectivity within all of this. Um, and when you really analyze the namesake, I think another aside that we should take here, when you really analyze the namesake, Lake City Quiet Pills, there's several places named Lake City in America. Uh, most notably is the Lake City Army Ammunition Plant located in Independence, Missouri. And at this ammunition plant, they produce 1.4 billion, with a B, rounds of ammunition per year. Uh, and it's not that big of a jump to look at quiet pills as a euphemism for bullets. Uh, so that's just a couple more interesting tidbits that I wanted to mention. I didn't wasn't exactly sure where I should bring them up, but... Uh, But those things kind of contribute to that military and mercenary vibe, right, from the job postings. So why don't we get into a few of those job postings and you'll kind of see the things I'm I'm talking about. And I want you to think about or or to to pay attention to the kinds of things you think when you hear these. Just initial reactions, right, without thinking about them for too long. Um, There were a handful of job postings. I'll read a few here. Immediate need. 8 to 10 Chinese slash Korean, fluent Korean dialect accent, details after contact, 12-week half-pay sequester on refusal. Uh, another job posting. Two ground types, fluent Farsi, Arabic, French, no papers, no problems. Um, another posting. Four English slash French private security on cruise must be bondable. Uh uh, one more, need five fluent Portuguese, no Euro W slash W, six month private gig. Um, so I don't know about you, but those scream mercenary to me. Um, to varying levels of legitimacy and legality, right? So no papers, no problems. That seems like they're trying to communicate that anybody could do the job. Uh, regardless of your legal status in one way or another, where the term bondable to me implies the requirement um, that you can give some kind of legitimate method or avenue to be paid, receive payment. Um, And maybe that's me just looking too much into it or making too many assumptions. uh, And I'm sure that that's something that I'll do plenty uh, throughout the course of this episode and throughout the course of this podcast. But private security, the one that references 
private security on cruise. That's very direct, and it's interesting that each of these needs requires different languages um, and, and different things like details down to the dialect of the language that you're speaking, right? Because if you go to Spain, the Spanish spoken there is much different than the Spanish spoken in Mexico. And so they're looking for not only people fluent in languages, but people who understand and, and can speak a certain dialect. Um, it's been theorized. I've seen this bounce around that the W slash W reference means one of two things. Um, the first and what I believe is less likely thing that it means is wet work. Um, and obviously I want this to be what it means because wet work is essentially meaning, uh, some kind of the job involves some kind of murder, right? So like an assassin type thing. Um, but the second and what I believe is more likely W slash W means wants or warrants. Um, going back to the legitimacy, right? I think that while wet work paints a cooler picture, uh, and I'm sure that that would be what more hopeful people might want that to mean, I think based on the context of the postings, how the uh, W slash W is used, I think it's more likely that wants and warrants, meaning you can't be wanted by law enforcement in the country uh, that the job is occurring. Uh the postings, some not I didn't read all uh, everything contained, but the postings also use a lot of acronyms: U.S. S.A. E.U. M.E. Um, which I think, if we're keeping our brains in that mercenary mindset uh, or militarized mindset, I think it's safe to assume that those mean um, in the same order: United States, South America, Europe, or European Union, um, and Middle East. <clears throat> so, you know, just just little tidbits of information this it's it's all strange right that's why we're talking about it um and one thing that they found on this hidden message board uh kind of mixed in and sharing space with all these job postings was a message and this message was posted on july 17th 2009 the very same day religion of peace made his final reddit post uh the very same day that user reddit user 2-6 had announced religion of peace's death on reddit there was an additional message within these job postings and it read like this i am sorry to tell you that old milo died yesterday he went quiet and calm not like we all figured i gave that fat mangy cat of his to the little girl next door no services or nothing you know milo i'm taking his ashes back to his farm to where his farm was Close to it anyway. There's a mall where his place was. So hoist a few for the old man. Remember what he said. Keep with the man who's got your back. Shade is maintaining the calendar and access to the file dump. Angel has the job postings for EU and Asia. We aren't sending anyone to ME. No one. Don't ask for listings. So there's no direct way to identify the person posting this message. There's no usernames. Um, when you're posting and, t and typing in the HTML code of this website, right? Not like on Reddit. Um, but based on the context of the message, I think it's safe to assume that the person who registered the Reddit username 2-6 and made that post, um, I think that these are the same people. He references a lot of the same details. He mentions being, being the one to have found Religion of Peace or Milo. Um, and he talks about giving the cat away. This post, though... One big difference from the Reddit post is that this post seems much more familiar than the posting on Reddit. Because while 2.6 on Reddit, his post was very much typed and, and framed as if he was notifying strangers that a mutual friend had passed away. Um, the post in the source code of Lake City Quiet Pills felt much more familiar, uh, like talking to friends or family versus talking to strangers. Um, and while all of this is quite interesting... That's kind of it for a while. Things quiet down uh, until a little over two months later, on September 30th, 2009, when the person we can assume is 2-6 uh, posted again. And this time they posted, For those who have asked, I bricked Milo's iron key the same day. All is well. Um, and for those of you who may not know or might not be sure what that means, an iron key is an encrypted flash drive used to keep data about as secure as you can keep it. Um, and fun fact, doing research for this episode, I learned that Iron Key is actually a brand of encrypted storage devices. So it's not 
I would assume it's something like uh, Kleenex when people want a tissue and they say Kleenex. I think that any encrypted flash drive uh, or USB storage device gets labeled as an Iron Key, but Iron Key is actually a brand. It's owned by the Kingston Technology Company, and while this all may seem irrelevant, I, uh, one thing that I thought was interesting is that the U.S. federal government actually partially funded the founding of Iron Key uh, with a grant of $1.4 million through the Homeland Security Research Projects Agency, um, which isn't necessarily doesn't necessarily tell us that anything nefarious or or crazy is happening here, right? It's used by tons of leg- in legit has tons of legitimate uses. The Iron Key does. Um, it was just something to further kind of connect the military and secrecy theme of everything. Uh, and if you don't know what bricking is, he said he bricked Milo's Iron Key. Uh, that is when you destroy a storage device and make it impossible to retrieve the data from the device again. So I used to work um, at a data center where we had customers who, when when, um, a server or when hard drives would come out, right, most of the time they would just be wiped. Um, But wiping is not 100% guarantee. And and in some cases, some of that old data can still be recovered or retrieved, even if it's deleted. And I put air quotes around that. Um, But we would have some customers request that the hard drives be destroyed or bricked, right? And we had this crazy metal shredder machine that would just tear them into pieces and it was really cool but that's also irrelevant um so an update this is an update posted now right on lake city quiet pills to whoever we can assume was at least two three people um if not more who had been asking two six what happened with the iron key that belonged to religion of peace or milo right that's just an interesting update. So we fast forward again. Another update. The next relevant update coming on November 14th, 2009. And this update read, Milo's will cleared probate. Surprise, Milo was loaded. Email Shade if we sent you out in 2005 to 2009. Shade will have checks cut for you. Amount is by how many times, not by pay total. Small share is 3 to 4K. Now... It seems that we've learned something else, right? Milo slash religion of peace, uh, whatever we want to call him. We'll probably use those interchangeably going forward. Uh, But Milo had a will. And the people that use the Lake City Quiet Pills site for these job postings, whatever they may be, um, and who assuming we can assume worked with religion of peace from 2005 to 2009 and probably worked with 2-6 as well, just based on the context of all this, they will be receiving a portion of whatever wealth milo left behind right Uh, i have to say pretty cool of him especially splitting it by number of jobs and not the pay total i mean maybe that is a small i think that's a very just cool like i don't know i respect it i respect that move uh and i think it's just important to say and give him that small bit of credit uh as he seems like an as he otherwise seems kind of like a piece of shit right but That would be our final update um, around all of this for the rest of 2009, so for the rest of the year. Um, But in January of 2010, again, same user that we can assume is 2.6, posted in the hidden message boards of the Lake City Quiet Pills website. Um, And this post is the one that really kicks everything off for us in this story and gets us into the strangeness of Lake City Quiet Pills. Um, So in January of 2010, the user posted, Happy New Year, everyone. We're having a birthday party for the old man on the 19th. Party starts at 1500 at the usual. Send your RSVP to Shade. FYI, we're booking a room for three days for anyone coming from out of area and overnight for locals. Come hoist one for Dutch Milo. Now, uh, to be fair, This post alone is probably the most innocent piece of information or anything in this entire story, right? It just kind of looks like a few old friends wanting to get together to celebrate the life of the friend that they lost. Um, But the most innocent looking part of the story is actually the piece that kind of connects us to the strangest and most significant piece of the story. But before we get to that connection... Um, there's a couple more things that we should talk about, a couple more updates, another post a few days later that gave a little more information on this birthday party, and it read, we got 38 rooms in the Marriott on 46. 
Shade has the key cards for locals. Pick up at the party. Give your travel name to the desk and that's it. No ID needed since we're covering the bill. Keep room service under 500, okay? The phones there are not secure. Bus from the hotel leaves at 1330. Car service vouchers for return trip when you're ready to crash. Don't DUI. Uh, Now a few things that you may notice, or at least that I noticed or think about when I hear this. 38 rooms seems like a lot for a semi-secret party, even assuming it's one person per room, which in my experience is rarely how hotel parties go. Um, Travel name and no ID. While it fits the secrecy of Lake City Quiet Pills community, it's certainly an odd detail for a party. I've never used a travel name in my life, in my life, um, but I'm also not a mercenary or a spy. So, you know, um, something else I want to mention that doesn't necessarily lend to mystery, but I, I think is worth noting, $500 room service, assuming that they mean per room, feels incredibly generous. But like we mentioned earlier, Mila was loaded. So not necessarily the hardest thing to imagine. Um, Now, the detail that jumps out to me probably the most, phones there are not secure. Why the hell would that matter if it's just a birthday celebration for a dead man? Um, Strange details for a party. And we touched on the expensive nature of this party with the room service thing, but we actually learn a little more. Uh, In another post on February 2nd, 2010. This is about two weeks after the party was set to take place. There was another post on the Lake City Quiet Pills hidden message boards, and it's an update for the party, and it goes, here is the final for the party. Hotel rooms, 48,341. Limo, 6,080. Bus, 569. Bar bill, 18,890. Food, 8,030. Dancers, 8,300. Miscellaneous tips, 850. Miscellaneous expenses, 2,840. And medical supplies, 180. Fat Tommy and Stu are okay too. Total, 94,080. You all did Dutch Milo proud. Thanks. Now, I don't know about you, but I struggle to imagine the kind of party you could throw for just just shy of $100,000. Um, and I did, personally, I did laugh when I saw that they spent more on dancers than I did on food. Um, But an extra piece of weirdness here is that medical supplies were a line item. Uh, But, you know, at least Fat Tommy and Stu are okay. Um, So in the months following this entire party saga, the same kind of job postings continued to appear in these message boards within Lake City Quiet Pills. Um, And it is just very much business as usual usual, uh, after the successful birthday party. Um, Just continued on with posts like this. Two business class security, non-con U.S., fluent French required. Um, Two light surveil, no U.S. WW, no Mex WW. Um, The site continued to operate like this until some of the attention it was getting from the internet sleuths and from Reddit users brought so much traffic and eyeballs to the site that they eventually encrypted to basically rehide messages that they were already hiding in the first place. Uh, And this cycle would repeat itself one more time and they would encrypt for the second time before finally shutting the website down for good and that is the end of lake city quiet pills um at least the end of the website uh we still have some more story to tell um because do you remember we talked about milo's expensive birthday party was the thing and how that was the thing that kind of provided us the most significant piece of connectivity that makes this entire story what it is today and why anybody, including me, is even talking about it. Um, And if you recall, let's go back to the birthday announcement posted on January 12th. We're having a birthday party for the old man on the 19th. Party starts at 1500 at the usual. Send RSVP to Shade. FYI, we're booking a room for three days for anyone coming from out of area and overnight for locals. So... Thanks to some strong internet detective work, it now appears to a lot of people that this party may be connected to one of the most complicated and intricate assassinations of the last century. Um, So Milo's birthday party is going to occur January 19th uh, at 1500, which would be 3 p.m. Well, on that very same day, January 19th, 2010... Mahmoud Al-Mabu arrived in Dubai shortly after 3 p.m. local time 
where he would be assassinated in his hotel room later that night. And I want to make it clear, for the next few pieces of information, we're not talking conspiracy, maybes, or what ifs. Um, what, what I'm going to cover is based on publicly available information about the events of this assassination. Um, once we know... Once we know this story, we can get back to some of the stranger conspiracy pieces and how we can connect them. And, you know, no promises. There may be some of my speculation and conspiracy sprinkled in as we talk about it. But the timeline, the events, what happened here is all 100% factual, regardless of the validity uh, of the Lake City Quiet Pills mystery. Uh, so about the assassination of Mahmoud al-Mabou. Mahmoud Amabu was the chief of logif- logistics and weapons for the military wing of Hamas, which is a Palestinian uh, fundamentalist, nationalist, uh, militant organization. They've been designated a terrorist organization by many nations, including Israel, the European Union, and the United States. Um, for some of his specific actions, as well as his position within Hamas, Amabu was a man that a lot of people wanted dead, right? As you can imagine. Um, As of January 19th, 2010, he had already survived two assassination attempts. Uh, One was a failed car bombing, and the other was an almost successful poisoning attempt that made him very sick but failed to kill him. Um, But, you know, as they say, third time is the charm. Um, Mahmoud al-Mabou was not dumb because, because of who he was and the fact that two other attempts had been made at his life. He would often travel with some type of security or bodyguards. But for whatever reason, on this trip to Dubai, he traveled alone. Uh, Although he did use a fake name and passport for his room and for the trip, and he requested a room without a balcony that had sealed windows to eliminate the possibility of outside entry. So it's not like he was careless in this at all. Um, But from the moment that Al-Mabu arrived in Dubai on January 19th, 2010... uh, and possibly even before, he was being tracked by what is estimated to be a network of 33 different people, all working together, who had arrived and stayed at various hotels in Dubai using forged and fraudulent passports. Now, they have surveillance footage from the hotel where the assassination occurred, showing this team of people arriving separately, meeting up within the hotel, communicating with one another, changing disguises, turning into bathrooms, trading off passing things from one to the next. Um, They used encrypted communication devices, but authorities did determine that several texts were exchanged with a number in Austria. Uh, The team of assassins followed uh, Al-Mabu, like I said, from the moment he got off his airplane. They followed him, tracked his movements, and eventually identified which hotel room was his. They then the team of assassins then communicates that information to other members of their team who use it to call um, the hotel and request the room across the hall from Al Mabu. Um, uh, Mahmoud Al Mabu he left the hotel that afternoon. There are conflicting reports about what he was doing during this time, and it appears a little unclear, but it's ultimately irrelevant as far as our story goes. Uh, while while Excuse me. While Amabu was gone, um, a team, the team of assassins, worked to gain access to his room, including having a member of the team stand by the elevators and be a lookout, who even acted as a distraction to other hotel goers or people who were staying in the hotel while, while the members of the team were working to gain access to Amabu's room. Um, Authorities found from a report that the electronic lock of Al-Mabu's door indicates an attempt to reprogram the lock around that time and is believed that this is how the assassins successfully gained access to the room. Uh, Al-Mabu returned to his room around 8.30 that night with assassins waiting inside for him. Uh, And according to Dubai police, he was dead by 9 p.m. Hotel security footage shows the same men who allegedly gained access to Al Mabu's room, leaving that floor and quickly and very soon after leaving the entire hotel um, after the assassination is believed to have occurred. And shortly thereafter, all 33 suspected members of the team to kill Mahmoud Al Mabu had left Dubai before the body was even discovered. That discovery would come the next day when a cleaner attempted to gain access to the room, only to find that 
the chain had been locked, which is really impressive considering that there was no other way to get in and out of the room. There was no balcony. The windows were sealed. Um, the chain is typically something that would need to be sealed from the inside. Uh, and that do- once they got the door opened, they discovered Amabu's body. He was found on the floor. On the table beside the bed, there was a bottle of medicine Uh, And between the chain lock on the door and the medicine on the table, I think that all of this was made to make, all this was done to make the death look natural or at least accidental. Um, Initially, authorities bought the whole natural cause accidental death thing, but upon, because of who Amabu was, they probably weren't going to stop, right, with a basic autopsy or investigation. So upon further investigation, they learned that. Mahmoud Almabu had been injected with a powerful muscle relaxer, um, and this muscle relaxer specifically would eliminate his motor functions without acting, uh, without putting him to sleep. Right, so essentially loses all control of his body, but is totally coherent and aware the whole time. Uh, so they hit him with this muscle relaxer. It's quick acting. He loses control before he is electrocuted and suffocated with the pillow in his hotel room. Now. It may have started to feel like we were covering two separate stories with Lake City Quiet Pills and then the assassination of Mahmoud Amabu, but the connection begins back at that birthday party for Milo, for Religion of Peace. Um, We already have the suspicion that something more militarized and violent and sinister is occurring behind the walls of the Lake City Quiet Pills website. Um, it's not a huge jump to think that assassination could be on the table. And some of the messages from the talk about the party, we're having a party for the old man on the 19th. Party starts at 1500 at the usual. Almabu lands in Dubai on the 19th at 1500 or 3 p.m. local time. We've got 38 rooms at the Marriott on 46. Shade has the key cards for locals. Pick up at the party. Give your travel name to the desk and that's it. No ID needed since we're covering the bill. Well, the assassination team is suspected to be 33 members, all of whom used fake names via forged and fraudulent passports. Another thing from the party uh, posts was the phones there are not secure. These assassins used encrypted communication devices. Now, I realize that there isn't, that's not a ton of tangible evidence to connect these two, right? There's a lot of what we quote unquote know is really based on assumption and coincidence, but there's more that gives us just a little more reason to think that the birthday party and the assassination could be one and the same. So some of the assassins paid for everything in cash, right? Leaving nothing to track or trace. Um, but others, however, used Payoneer, which is a specific type of prepaid credit card. Um, Payoneer cards receive branding, which from what I understand means the cards get branded or kind of the stamp of approval from the companies that we all know are familiar with like Visa, MasterCard. Um, But these, the Payoneer cards received branding in the United States, but their CEO um, has had direct ties. It was known that their CEO had direct ties to Israeli intelligence. And since Al-Mabu was a high ranking Hamas member who was directly wanted for the killing of two Israeli soldiers, it's a fair connection to make that the Payoneer CEO may have I don't want to say had a hand in this assassination, but his hands are likely not clean either. Uh, And another thing that really blew me away about the Payoneer cards used by the assassins is that the cards were issued from a bank in the United States um, in a town called Storm Lake, Iowa, which is about an hour's drive from a little place called Lake City, Iowa. Uh, There are a few other bits and pieces we could talk about like the possible military meaning behind the name milo meaning that it may not be a name but an acronym standing for military intelligence liaison officer um but i don't think you need much more information than what we've covered to this point today i'm i'm sure there are a few people listening that are skeptical um i mean the same internet detective efforts that uncovered this story in the first place have lately been working to either confirm or deny the reality of all this. Um, And it seems like most of the efforts are leaning towards trying to deny it or debunk it, right? Um, They're just, there's just enough information as to why you shouldn't believe this story as to why you should. But I will say this, if it was a hoax or someone just goofing, right? Having fun, 
The fact that you can make so many connections accidentally between a real-life event that nobody would have known was going to occur ahead of time, getting not only the date but the approximate time correct and talking about it, uh, talking about the things happening in hotels, connecting the Pioneer cards to a town within an hour's drive of a place called Lake City when this whole thing started on a website called Lake City Quiet Pills. I mean, if it was a hoax, it would be to gain attention, right, and to have this thing blow up. But then why encrypt the information on your website? Why encrypt it again? And then why shut it down eventually when people kept pushing? I think there's almost too much coincidence in all of this for it to not be true. But at the same time, I do recognize the possibility that it isn't. Um, But I say even if it is fake, it still deserves to be discussed because of the sheer number of things that had to line up. The sheer number of coincidences that had to occur for us to even be talking about this today. Um, So that is the end. That's going to do it for us. That was the story of Lake City Quiet Pills. Um, And like I said, this story is one of my absolute favorite pieces of strangeness. I mean, I want to believe, you know, and like it just it's such a good story. I think it would make a terrific movie or maybe Netflix series. um, So you could go more into the history of religion and peace. I don't know. I'm taking this way further than I should. Um, But yeah, that was Lake City Quiet Pills, one of my favorites. But we're going to bring you strangeness every single week every single thursday i want to thank everybody for listening to this episode the very first episode of down with the strangeness please subscribe to the podcast on apple follow us on spotify leave a rating and review wherever you may be listening you can always email me um, at down with the strangeness at gmail.com subscribe to the youtube channel if you prefer to listen there uh, I'll also be putting some good visuals in the YouTube videos, like for this uh, Lake City Quiet Pills episode. We'll have there'll be a photo of um, some of the suspects of those 33 that they suspect. Uh, we'll have some of some images taken from both Reddit postings and this hidden message board, uh, and those will flash up on the screen as we're talking about them. So if you're into that kind of thing, you want to see at least a little more, have some visual aids to go along with what I'm talking about. Uh, definitely check me out on check us out on YouTube down with the strangeness uh follow the podcast on instagram and twitter links for everything youtube instagram twitter um everything is in the show notes if you're interested i am so happy to finally be doing this It's something i wanted to do for a long time been working on it planning it for a while and i'm just so excited for everybody that's here for episode one everybody who's coming back and listening to this in the future um yeah i just appreciate it i look forward to doing this again next week i hope you will join me and until then Stay strange. Mm-hmm.